Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Hey, France now. Let's do it. If you're not ready to learn, there's the door. My name is Connor. I'm from Rhode Island. Greatest state in the Union. New England. I just have lunch. And so I always get tired after I have lunch. But I'm ready though. I have coffee. I had coffee. I just chugged it. Let's go. My name's Connor. Did I say that? Original link to the video. Top of the description. Right below that. Link to the Discord. Click on it. Send you right over there. I have done the German family tree. The Swedish and the British. Now let's do France. Next will be either Norway, Russia, we'll, we'll figure it out. Today I'm going to show you the family tree of French monarchs, starting with Charlemagne and going all the way down to Napoleon the Third. So in the total, we'll my voice just cracked. Napoleon the Third, the greatest monarch to ever live. Be looking at over one thousand one hundred years of French history. I'll be using my European Royal Family Tree West chart, which can be purchased as a poster from my website, usefulcharts.com. Get comfortable. As you can see, this chart starts with Charlemagne at the very top. As this do is all because the he was the first emperor in Western Europe since the fall of Rome, and he is connected to every single European royal house that came after him. Jeez. Most importantly, he is generally considered to be the first person in the long list of French monarchs, as well as the first person in the long list of Holy Roman Emperors. That is why he is shown with two coats of arms. Oh yeah, I just did the, um, the Habsburg one as well. This one representing France and this one representing the Holy Roman Empire. But at the time that Charlemagne came to the throne, there was no France and there was no Holy Roman Empire. There was simply the Kingdom of the Franks. Charlemagne was a Frank, and he belonged to a dynasty known as the Carolingians, named after his grandfather, Charles Martel. But the Carolingians had only recently rose to power. Before them... Aren't the Carolingians a Swedish thing? Carolingians? But the Carolingians had only recently rose to power. Before them, there was actually another dynasty known as the Merovingians, who were the first to unite and rule the Franks. I've heard of this them. coming Friday, I'll be releasing a separate video covering the family tree of the Merovingian dynasty as part of a multi-channel collaboration called Project Clovis. I have to watch that one. I've always heard Merovingian but Vingiet never really knew what it was. I gotta watch that. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's start with Charlemagne. Phones away. Class is in session. Hope you guys are all doing well, by the way. If not, then... Uh... So Charlemagne succeeded his father Pepin in the year 768. Over the next few decades, he greatly expanded the Frankish territory, conquering the Saxons and Bavarians the to Lombards. the east, as well as the Lombards to the south in Italy. Meanwhile, over in Constantinople, a female had become Roman Emperor for the first time. That was Irene of Athens. This put Charlemagne in an interesting position. He controlled Rome, he controlled most of Western Europe, and of course, he was male. Therefore, in the year 800, the Pope decided to make a bold move. He crowned Charlemagne Emperor, signaling that Charlemagne was now the true heir of Augustus Caesar, not Irene. The idea was that the emperorship would permanently transfer from Constantinople back to Rome. But in reality, what happened was that Europe ended up once again with two emperors. Initially, the. Okay, so. There was Charlemagne and then the, the, the female, the queen, and the pope chose Charlemagne, which then I know there's a constant struggle between Charlemagne and the pope and who answers to who. The reason the pope chose Charlemagne 
was so that it would return to Rome rather than than Constantinople. Then, okay. I'm gonna need your guys' help, like always. The plan was for Charlemagne to divide his realm into three parts, one for each of his three main sons. But only the youngest son outlived him, and therefore that son became Emperor Louis I. You'll notice that a lot of French monarchs will be named Louis, so take note that this Louis is the original one. Hey, when he died, OG. the empire was finally divided into three parts. The eldest son received the title of emperor, as well as the territory of Middle Francia, which included Italy. The other two surviving sons received West Francia and East Francia, respectively. West Francia basically corresponding with France, and East Francia basically corresponding with Germany. What is with the title, The Bald? Like, did balls have a separate meaning back then, or is it just because, like, they're, they're losing hair, and so you're the bald? Charles ...with France, and East Francia basically corresponding with Germany. But, since we're only concerned with France in this video, we're just going to follow the West Francia side, Understood. which is shown in blue. So that side starts with Charles the Bald, who, by the way, wasn't bald. Supposedly, he was actually quite hairy, so the nickname was actually more of a joke. He ended up becoming emperor because Middle Francia ran out of male heirs after just one generation. But when he died, the emperorship Bail. didn't simply pass to his son. Only the title of West Francia did. The emperorship went to a relative over in East Francia known as Charles the Fat. So, in West Francia, we get Louis II, who didn't reign very long, followed by his... Why would these guys want to call them these, th these, these things? Like, I, I'm assuming if a, a king wanted to not have that name, then he could have it, yet... I want to be called the fat or the bald. West Francia, I gotta stop we talking. get Louis II, who didn't reign very long, followed by his two sons, Louis III and Carloman II. But when Carloman II died, his younger brother Charles was too young to take the throne. So Charles the Fat ended up becoming King of West Francia as well as Emperor over in East Francia. This would be the last time that all of Francia was united under a single ruler. But by this point, the nobility in Western Europe had grown very powerful. So powerful that they eventually had Charles the Fat deposed and decided to elect new kings instead. Over in West Francia, they elected a king from a totally new dynasty, the Robertian dynasty. That individual became King Odo. But when King Odo died, the throne went back to the Carolingians, because by this time, Charles III, known as Charles the Simple, was old enough to rule. But things would continue to go back and forth for a while. Carolingians, because by this time, Charles III, known as Charles the Simple, was old enough to rule. Why, why didn't it go to Hugh? But, but, but things would continue to go back and forth for a while. Because during this period, the monarchy was basically elective. So Charles the Simple was eventually replaced with Odo's brother, Robert. And then when Robert died, his son-in-law, Rudolf, became king. Now, when Rudolf died, King Robert's son, Hugh, was in a good position to become king. But instead of taking the crown for himself, he instead chose to support the son of Charles the Simple, who oh. became... Uh. <laughs> Why is it going... Why, why does it go to King Robert and then Beatrice having a kid, 
Hugh the the Great and Emma, and then why why does it go left to Rudolph? What? To supporting, but instead of taking the crown for himself, a good position when Rudolph died, King Robert's son Hugh was in a good position to become king. But instead of taking the crown for himself, he instead chose to support the son of Charles the Simple, who became Louis the Fourth. This way, Hugh was able to obtain the safer position of being the power behind the throne. He even married the sister Smart. of the Holy Roman Emperor, Otto the Great, in order to cement his position. But eventually, the Robertians would become kings again. Two generations after Louis IV, there were no longer any Carolingians left, and therefore the nobles elected Hugh the Great's son, also named Hugh, also as Capet. king. He was nicknamed Capet, and therefore he and his descendants became known as the House of Capet. And the House of Capet went on to rule France for the next 800 years. That's a record when it comes to European dynasties. But note that the Henry Capet and the House of Capet went on to rule France for the next 800 years. That's a record when it comes to European dynasties. But note that the House of Capet is actually a branch of the earlier. So up to Napoleon? Robertian dynasty. So really, their rule goes back even further. Hugh was followed by his son, Robert II, and then by his son, Henry I. Note that Henry I's younger brother, Robert, became the progenitor of the Ducal House of Burgundy, a junior branch of the Capets who went on to rule in Portugal for 244 years. In France, they continued to get several nice father-son successions, with each king having a nice long reign which certainly helped to solidify the dynasty's hold on power. The next person I want to talk about is Louis VII. He was one of the first kings to participate in one of the Crusades. At that time, he Base was married Holt. to Eleanor of Aquitaine, one of the most Where's important that? women in European history. Their marriage was later annulled, and she then married King Henry II of England. When I come across figures or events um, during a video that I really want to look up on later, I just want to open another tab. Okay. England, which led to is later annulled, and she then married King Henry II of England, which led to England's involvement on the continent and the creation of the Angevin Empire. No. But please note that up until this point, everyone that I've talked about so far wasn't really a king of France. Technically, up to and including Louis VII, they were kings of West Francia. But this changed with Philip II. He was the first to use the title King of France. Why? He also managed to recapture much of the territory that had been under the control of the Angevin kings from England. In fact, during Philip's reign, his son, the future why? king... Why? 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 It didn't say why. Why, why is he the first one to, to put the title? Much of the territory that France... He also... Uh, the... He was the first to use the title King of France. Why? He why? also... His son, England. He was King Louis VIII, was briefly declared King of England. He was later known as Louis the Lion. He was the father of Louis the Ninth, also known as Saint Louis, Whoa, being the only years. French king to be granted sainthood. He is the namesake of the U.S. city Saint Louis. Really? His younger brother Charles also became a king, not of France, but of Sicily in southern Italy. His descendants became known as the House of Anjou. Question, guys. I, I noticed that, uh, you know, um, Sicily and Corsica, right, are those two islands that are almost one island. They're so close to each other, right? Uh, Corsica being the more northern one, kind of parallel to the Italian peninsula, and then Sicily below that. Am I, am I thinking of the right ones? I noticed that France has Corsica, yet, yet... I'm thinking of the right two islands, right? Yet, yet Italy has owned... 
um, Sicily. And, and them being so close together, you'd figure eventually one would push the other one out. And so I, I wonder how... Yeah. In southern Italy, his descendants became known as the House of Anjou. And that branch of the Capet dynasty would go on to rule in Hungary as well. If you want to check out that branch, it's shown on my European royal family tree northeast chart. Saint Louis was followed by his son, Philip III. Philip III had a younger brother named Robert, who married Beatrice, the Lady of Bourbon. Their son became the first Duke of Bourbon, and it is from him that the later House of Bourbon would descend. Philip III was followed by Philip IV. He married the Queen Regnant of Navarre, and therefore when she died, their son Louis became King of Navarre. Where so her? these next four kings of France were all kings of Navarre as well. But this is where the 400 plus years of simple father-son successions came to an end. John the first Louis died. the 10th died young, leaving his son John, who was born five months later, as king. But King John lived only five days, and hence his uncle Philip became king. But then Philip died without any heirs, and his brother Charles also died without any heirs. This created a crisis because France followed Salic law, which meant that only a male could be the ruling monarch. But there was some debate over whether that male had to come from a strict male-only line or whether a male from a female branch. This happens all the time. And every in each of these chart uh, lineage monarchy things, it's the rule is is always or nine out of ten times only follows a male line. And when that ends, well, you, the house ends. But then there's always a well, technically, if we do it this way. And then the male here, it still works. So basically, that's all bullcrap. It's a male line until there's no male, and then do whatever you can as monarch to keep your line going, even if it means going down a female path. Could be allowed. You can see that these French kings here had a sister named Isabella, who married the King of England. They had a son who became King Edward III, who was not only a descendant of the previous English kings, but also the closest male descendant of Philip IV of France. So after Charles IV died, Edward claimed to be the legitimate king of France. However, there was another candidate. Yeah, you can see it goes up all the way to here and then down. And then, no, up to here, and then brother, and then, how does this? Philip IV had had a brother who had a son who was the closest relative who came from a strict male only line. Why didn't that they... individual was Philip VI from the branch of the House of Capet that became known as the House of Valois. So what was the, the issue? conflict between these two contenders over who was the rightful king of France is what started the Hundred Years War between France and England. Is this where and this Agincourt is why happens? from this point on the English kings included the fleur de lis symbol on their coat of arms. That's they why. did that all the way up to the year 1801, following the French Revolution. Anyhow, the Hundred Years War actually lasted 116 years. And in the end, France, led Not by the catchy. House of Valois, won, thanks in part to a famous woman known as Joan, Joan of Arc. Arc. By that time, Charles VII was king. He was followed by Louis XI and Charles VIII. Charles VIII came to the throne when he was just 13, and then he died in his 20s without any sons, brothers, or even uncles to replace him. So at that point, the throne jumped to another branch of... Whoa, 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 what's happening in here? ...of the Valois dynasty, and Louis XII became king. 
He had been married to Charles's sister, Joan. But when Louis became king, he had that marriage. Look at this weird, weird going on up here. I know he's about to explain it, but I want to just try and figure it out. So, okay. So, there's a three, uh, a menage a trois. Is that where, is that where that, that, that term comes from? Is it right here? Because it's like, so he dies, Charles, King Charles VIII. And then they go up here, a little bit up, to Charles V. And so the brother of the dead King Charles IV. And that goes down. And then it goes down to Charles, Duke of Orleans. And then to King Louis the seventh, the twelfth. And then... And then... And, but... King Charles VIII's sister, St. Joan of France, is that Joan of Arc? No. Was married to King Louis, the, the 12th over here, but then they got divorced, it seems, and I guess the two, so the two represents a second marriage, I think. And then he marries the former wife of the guy originally, and they have a kid. And then it looks like he has a three, my man. <laughs> These two, Satine. And then he died in his... Tw At that point, the throne and Louis the Twelfth became king. He had been married to Charles's sister, Joan. But when Louis became king, he had that marriage annulled. And he married Charles's widow instead, who happened to be the Duchess Regnant of Brittany. By this point, France was engaged in the Italian Wars, which was basically a rivalry between the House of Valois and the House of Habsburg. Soon after he became king, Louis XII captured the prosperous Italian city of Milan, and he... I know, uh, uh, you know, the Italian states, Italy and, and Austria have had some beef. The 12th captured the prosperous Italian city of Milan, and he added to his titles the title Duke of Milan, based on the fact that his grandmother, the wife of this person here, was the daughter of the first Duke of Milan. He was able to hold on to Milan for about 13 years, until the Italians captured it back. So he's eventually going to annul this and go marry Mary of England. Unfortunately for him, he did not have any sons. He even tried with the sister of Henry VIII, but he was not successful, and therefore the throne passed to the son of his first cousin. That person became Francis I, and ended up being the main rival of the great Habsburg Emperor Charles V during the continuing Italian Wars. It was during the reign of Francis I that the French explorer Jacques Cartier landed in Canada and claimed the area for France, naming it New France. He therefore is sometimes considered to be the first Canadian monarch, even though Canada didn't actually exist then, and of course at that point was and now we have Quebec entirely populated by independent First Nations groups. This is crazy. I've told this story before. It's already getting a bit long of video, but Mount Katahdin, which is the highest mountain in Maine, it's it's a bit. It's I think it's like a bit above five thousand feet. Not not that tall, um, but still it's tall for over here. And a bit further north is is Quebec, and we we met some uh, you know two people from Quebec at the top who were like trying to take pictures because it's the end of the Appalachian Trail on the northern end and I, I i thought before that point yeah i knew they spoke french but i i thought like english was an, a second language or at least taught it was it we we could not understand each other and i found it so crazy how just a few hundred miles north of me is people who speak french and and don't understand english something about french speaking people they really don't want to learn other people's uh, language uh, I, I can't say that as an American or English person, neither do we. At that point was entirely populated by independent First Nations groups.
You'll notice that Francis married the daughter of the previous king, who by that point was Duchess Regnant of Brittany. Because of this marriage, the next king of France also became the Duke of Brittany, officially making Brittany a part of France and thus ending its previous independence. That king was Henry II, and he married a member of the powerful Medici family. Three of their sons would go on to be kings of France and would become the last three Valois kings. Francis II was actually the first husband of Mary, Queen of Scots, but he died when he was just 16. Had he lived a long life with Mary and produced heirs, history might have gone in a very different direction. Instead, his brother Charles IX became king, and France descended into a civil war known as the French Wars of Religion, fought between Catholics and Protestants. While that was going on, the third of these Died. three brothers was elected king of the Poland-Lithuanian Commonwealth. Oh, goes to but Margaret. shortly after he became king there, Charles IX died, and Henry had to return to France to become king giving up his Polish crown in the process. And then he dies? But, like I said, there was a civil war going on, and after a 15-year reign, Henry III became the first French king to be assassinated. He also ended up being the last king from the House of Valois. Louis XVI. At this point, the throne passed to the House of Bourbon, which, as I mentioned earlier, was a junior branch of the House of Capet. So the next king, Henry IV, was still a direct male line descendant of Hugh Capet. His mother had been the Queen Regnant of Navarre. So before he became King of France, he had actually already been King, the King of Navarre. So at this point, when he became King of France, Lower Navarre basically merged with France. But the most important thing to note about Henry IV was that he was originally Protestant, which was obviously a problem in the minds of many French people at that time, being a strongly Catholic country. And even though he converted to Catholicism, there were a lot of assassination attempts made on him. One of those attempts ended up being successful, and therefore he was succeeded by his son Louis XIII initially under the regency of his mother, the second of the two Medici queens of France. It was under the... I gotta look up Medici too. The rule of Louis XIII and his prime minister, Cardinal Richelieu, that France became an absolute monarchy, something that reached its peak during the reign of the next king who is probably the most famous of all the French kings, Louis XIV. He is often referred to as the Sun King, or simply as Louis the Great. Louis had a very long reign. In fact, the longest reign of any European monarch in history. Years. And during that reign, France became the most powerful kingdom in Europe. Several wars were fought to curb his power, including the War of the Grand Alliance, in which basically every other major power teamed up against him. He lived so long that he outlived their major power, power including the War of the Grand Alliance, in which based I gotta learn about that. Basically, every other major power teamed up against him. He lived so long that he outlived both his son and his grandson, and therefore when he died, he was succeeded by his great-grandson, who became Louis the Fifteenth. Note that his second most senior grandson became the King of Spain, something that I go into more detail on in my Habsburg and Spain videos. The right, because after the... 30 years war, wasn't there a big fight between Spain and, and France? This is why the current royal house of Spain is the house of Bourbon. They include the current king, Philippe VI, and are the direct male line descendants of the Sun King. Sorry, but King John V here, is that's a woman. And hence are direct male line descendants of Hugh Capet as well. 
Louis XV became the second longest reigning French king, but during his reign, the stage was set for the French Revolution, in which France decided it didn't want a king anymore. This occurred during the reign of his grandson, Louis XVI, and his queen, Marie Antoinette. But who was... Who was King Louis the... Who was King Louis the, the 16th's mother? Because what is this Louis Dauphine of France? It, it, Marie Leszczynska of Poland? They had him and what? They were both beheaded and France became a republic. They had a son who is numbered Louis the 17th who died in captivity. But as you probably know, the first Republic of France did not last long. Instead, France became an empire under the reign of the infamous Napoleon Bonaparte, infamous. who went on to conquer most of Europe. But eventually, Napoleon was defeated by the other European powers, and France decided to restore the Bourbon monarchy under the former king's brother, who became Louis XVIII. He then, in turn, was succeeded by a third brother, Charles X. But then there was another revolution in France. This time it did not result in a republic. Instead, it resulted in a more liberal form of monarchy. 1830 to 1848. Wonder what happened in 1848. Charles was replaced with Louis Philippe I, who used the title King of the French instead of King of France. He was from the House of Orleans, which was a junior branch of the House of Bourbon, and hence a junior branch of the House of Capet as well. But then in 1948, there was a third major... 1848, but I know what he means. ...as well. But then in Simple 1948, mistake. there was a third major revolution in France and a second republic was declared under the presidency of Napoleon's nephew. Eventually, though, the republic became an empire again Napoleon and the III. president became Napoleon III. Napoleon II being the son of Napoleon I, who kind of reigned for two weeks, but not really. Then came the Franco-Prussian War in 1870, which France lost. And at that point, France decided to become a republic for good. And it has been a republic ever since. So the last monarch of France was Napoleon III, but the last king was Louis-Philippe I. If you want to find out who would be monarch today, I've done a video about that, which I'll link to in the description. It's an older video, which I hope to update later this year. And remember to keep an eye out for this Friday's video. So Napoleon III didn't have any kids? Oh, which is good. I know that's not the reason it ended, but I'm later just this curious. year. And remember to keep an eye out for this Friday's video, which is going to go back before Charlemagne and look at the Merovingian dynasty. Once again, if you want a copy out. of this poster, you can head over to my website, usefulcharts.com. Or click that link right Thanks there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for making. Ooh, Merovingian. Today I'm going... Awesome video like always. I love this channel. Any questions I had? Hope I wasn't too annoying or stupid. Any questions? Be grateful if I got any answers. See you guys next time. Hope you're doing well. Chin up. See ya.